Hi, everybody. In today's show, we're going to talk about castle sieges and classes. And we're also going to meet Margaret, the new community marketing lead. She seems nice. I like her. She laughs a lot. I like happy people. There's a lot to talk about. So let's get started. So that was the video. Um, I know that there's some people who want to see gameplay and stuff. We'll be showcasing a lot of that as we get closer. Yep. There was like actually another video that we were discussing putting in there, and then we're like, no, we'll just hold off. Um, <laughs> but let's nice. talk first about um, kind of these castles that you see here. I want to talk about the names of them and the lore, so I'm actually going to throw that over to you. And we can start things off if you want. Yeah, so um, we basically have, right now, we've got two maps. Um, not quite sure exactly how many maps we're going to end up with, but um, we have one representing the Dunzenkel, which are the sort of dwarven, uh, dwarven folks um, pre-fall. Um, Yes. <laughs> uh, their castle is named Milnar. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, so it's kind of like a, a very dwarven-y kind of experience. There's some underground tunnels. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of different ways to like kind of go underneath the map. Um, and then, of course, their walls are big and sturdy and strong, and it's built into the face of the wall. Um, and so right. there's there's some very interesting tactical concerns uh, dealing with a dwarven um, castle versus... It's also, it's also situated on a, on a mountainside, mm -hmm. right? And the attacker's battlefield is kind of uh, against the precipice a little bit, right? Yep. You kind their of backs are against the uh, cliff, Yes, basically. exactly. Uh, <laughs> you can't get, can't get behind. Yeah, exactly. No flanking. <laughs> no flanking. <Yeah. laughs> um, and then we have the uh, Corgan Castle. Yep. Which is the, the Aelin. Uh, Aelin mm -hmm. uh, map. Which is now, only humans. Right, that's right. These are the uh, ancient humans before the fall. <clears throat> and, you know, the idea behind these castle maps is, you know, we have to, We there are five castles that are intended for Ashes of Creation, the right. MMORPG. So it's very likely that eventually you will see five castle maps uh, on the uh, Possibly. Uh, on the Apocalypse uh, gameplay. So um, the idea here is that, you know, we have two sides. We have the attackers and the defenders, mm -hmm. right? And um, when you join into the uh, castle siege uh, uh, in Apocalypse, you're going to be able to select one of six classes, right? And upon selecting those classes, then you're going to be placed on uh, your starting side, uh, whether it be the attacker or the defenders, uh, and then you're going to uh, be able to 
start preparations. It's going to be a little bit of a loading time where you have selected those classes. You're going to take positions, perhaps, uh, and whatnot. Uh, and there are siege weaponries that's going to be present. There's, you see here, some ballistas, some trebuchets, uh, a battering ram. Battering ram. And yeah. there may be some traps and some uh, powder keg kind of stuff. Uh, available to uh, destroy to throw like things. oil kegs over. <laughs> the whole <laughs> first phase is going to be about figuring out how to get inside the castle. So, so that's kind of what that first phase is going to be about. It's going to be a lot of things blowing up, uh, people trying to stop you from blowing up their things. Um, it should be a pretty exciting phase of the game. Right. Um, and then eventually, once those walls are breached, it's going to be about capturing capture points. Yes. Um, capture points can increase or decrease the duration of the map. Yes. Uh, it will uh, change the opposing side sides uh, respawn times. Mm -hmm. um, it'll give your side a nice good buff uh, mm -hmm. to help you kind of keep the morale up on your side and keep making progress. And then of course any capture point you take, uh, when you respawn you can teleport to that capture Correct. point. Ooh, so, awesome. yeah. so there's a lot of lot of interesting things that can happen on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, different changes <coughs> of the flow of, of how fights happen. Um, so we're pretty excited about it all in all. I think, and then obviously you guys talked a little bit about all of those things. Um, let's talk a little bit about how uh, the differences are going to be when it comes to like apocalypse versus the MMORPG, so we can kind of show like that. Yeah, so um, I mean, by and large, we we are modeling this after kind of what we want to see happen in the actual MMO. Obviously, right. there's going to be you know more classes, there's going to be more skills. Yes. Um, you know, there'll probably be more different types of siege, siege weaponry. weaponry. Um, you know, there'll be more of a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but the overall kind of basic combat of it will be very similar to what you're going to see here. Right, I mean, when talking about strategy, the ability to capture these points, mm -hmm. the ability to, to penetrate the walls and or gates, creating these choke points that have become available, the primary objective on the attacker's end is to reach the center keep of the castle to channel on the final like relic that's present in order to actually uh, achieve the victory. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas then on the defender side, you are uh, attempting to uh, hold out, right, right? survive, and you can keep rush you can rush the field as a defender. Uh, you can approach the uh, enemy encampment, uh, their headquarters, and you can damage their ability to siege, basically. Right. You can take out their siege weapons. Mm -hmm. You can take out their control points. You can reduce their spawn or increase their spawn time so that you know you kind of gain the upper hand Absolutely, on that map. Yeah. But again, that's going to be very similar to what's going to be happening in the MMO. Yes. And in the MMO, castle sieges are very uh, a, a, a primary point of contention when it comes to guild play, PvP I was just on the map. Say, you know. Let, do yeah. we want to? transition and talk a little bit about raid versus raid stuff. I know we don't want to go into super detail about that yet, yeah. but I know that we wanted to touch base on like a little bit to give you guys a teaser of what that's going to be. <coughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know, talk, when talking about raid versus raid, right, there's a lot of mechanics that come into play. There's the balance that exists between the classes and the composition of those raids against each other, uh, how the rock, paper, scissors type of interaction occurs between those uh, different compositions. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also the mobility aspect, how quickly you can move a raid across a battlefield, how you can keep them cohesive and move together. Mm -hmm. How do raids impact the choke points of a castle? How wide of an of a of opening do you need in a castle in order to make sure that you're not going to be running into death's arms right. uh, when you a decide to charge? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All of those uh, ideas can get tested in Apocalypse in preparation for the MMORPG because as we scale up the number of participants that are present in these matchmaking type sieges, we get to collect data, design data on how players interact with all of those features, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. We can expand on the limited classes that will be present in Apocalypse in preparation for the core functionality of those skills as they relate to roles uh, in the raid composition. And I think there's some people who are like, so where are the dragons at? you got castles. So <laughs> we, do have, we do have dragons, yeah. but not in Apocalypse. Yeah, some people were asking, like, they were saying, like, it'd be kind of re really neat to have, like, one person be the king and you kind of like king of the hill style. It would be very cool yes. as a new game. As, yeah, yeah as many people know who've been following Ashes of Creation and the MMORPG, um, <coughs> you do have a royal mount that is granted to the lord of a castle, king or queen of a castle. And that royal mount does have some efficacy on the battlefield when it relates to mass PvP, the ability to impact uh, particularly raids, yeah. uh, kind of breathing down fire or whatever other type of skills that specific royal mount has. Um, but in Apocalypse, we have yet to really work on that system. I don't know if we'll see its head in Apocalypse. Yeah. But. It's a little bit difficult when yeah. you're talking about sort of like matchmaking. Yes. Uh, I think stuff. this next question that? is kind of a perfect transition sure. into our next topic, which is uh, Greek wants to know, 
um, or a geek wants to know, it's spelled different. Um, are you adding new classes to the Siege or is it just a, a plain overall basic class uh, similar to like, I don't know what the word plain is used, but like our BRs. Right, right, right. The class <coughs> sort of, yeah, the classless yeah. sort of thing. I need night kind yeah. of guy. So, you know, we we do have six classes that are will be associated with the uh, Castle Siege mode in Apocalypse. And those six classes really relate to the Holy Trinity of uh, a standard kind of uh, uh, class design uh, between tanks, <clears throat> damage mitigation, and control versus DPS and uh, support. Uh, and I think, do we have those? Oh, yep, we have, we have those up right on the now. screen. So you can see this is for <laughs> the Apocalypse uh, Castle Sieges. Uh, you'll be selecting one of these six classes uh, <clears throat> when entering into uh, the Siege Mode map. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we can start, we want to start with just yeah, going through them? Yeah, let's just start with going through them. I mean, obviously these are sure. the ones that you guys see here. I wanted to give a shout out to Ryan who made the awesome emblems. So Ryan check is those out. Those yes. are awesome. I'm sure he's watching the stream. Um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> let's just go into the first group of them. Um, we'll pop those onto the screen. Sure. So we kind of have <clears throat> each of these separate and we're going to talk about mm. each of them. So I guess Arch Wizard is to start off. We'll, we'll go with the DPS classes. Okay. So maybe let's first talk about DPS classes and their basic roles overall. Yeah. I mean, which is yeah. probably DPS. They do damage. Um, and then go into the specifics with That's the high so, priest yeah. versus the engineer. Yeah, so um, we've got the uh, Arch, Wizard, Arch Wizard, which is kind of focused on doing AOE damage. Um, mm -hmm. So they're there <coughs> to kind of clear out an area to deal damage to lots of people. Um, they don't have the, kind of the focus fire ability that the Hawkeye does. Um, but in, again, they're, they're really focused on doing a large amount of damage to a large amount of people. Um, they also have some some clever tricks up their sleeves. They are wizards after all. Um, so uh, a couple different abilities that you might find an arch, arch, oh arch, arch, arch wizard, wizard, arch arch wizard. wizard to have <laughs> um, would be uh, we have uh, the idea of a defensive teleport. So a uh, wizard can get into battle, but they also can get out of battle, um, and they use little tricks to do that. So they will teleport backwards a good distance and leave behind a decoy so that oh, other like players don't necessarily know where he went. Mm -hmm. um, he, they also have uh, kind of a flamethrower ability, so they'll be able to put their hand out, uh, channel some energy, and just uh, kind of continually do fire damage in a cone in front of them uh, for as long as their mana bar lasts out. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the arc wizard. Yeah, and one of the ideas that we we're playing with that we want to test necessarily is is how DPS damage affects either armor and or health, right? right. And um, one of the ideas behind the arc wizard is that magical damage from the arc wizard would m be more impactful against armor that mm -hmm. a player has as opposed to necessarily health. Right. Uh, and vice versa for the Hawkeye. For right. Hawkeye, Hawk, Hawkeye has abilities that allow them to ignore armor entirely um, and they can kind of focus on getting headshots and stuff that um, again, uh, kind of Get out of the armor situation, right? And so I do have some uh, like ahead. a question from the chat is regarding obviously the D two DB cl TBS classes that we're showcasing mm -hmm. right now are these two. Um, are, are there going to be any melee ones as well? Yes, yes, both, there will be. Both the guardian and the weapon master are primarily melee in nature. Yeah, they are almost they are entirely melee there in nature. Go. Yeah, that answers your question. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, as far as the Hawkeye goes, a couple of cool abilities that they have um, is. Uh, there's, they've got that grappling hook so that they can get up onto <coughs> high places easily. Um, they can basically you know, shoot people from afar, and so we want to give them the ability to kind of take advantage of that and get up into position quickly. Um, again, that's partly partly because they have a lot of abilities that kind of lock themselves down. I like um, the way they fire the most, because it's like the guided arrow type of yeah, thing. Yeah, so that's one of the abilities we have, is a guided arrow, so that, that when they fire, this ability allows them to kind of actually pilot the arrow uh, so they can get around corners and uh, kind of take out people who are giving them a lot of trouble. <laughs> we'll need a lot of testing with that, so uh, yeah. have fun. Because <laughs> I think you might have even said, like, uh, so how's that going to work with walls? <laughs> well, you right. just go around. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, that's the point, right? Exactly. Grappling hook and then... We want to keep it fun, right? Yeah. Oh, we're talking about the grappling hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I absolutely. was talking about the guided arrow. Oh, I, yeah, when I'll I said you grappling walls, hook and then you guided arrow. I wanted to know with the wall, uh, how that would work with walls is if you shoot the grappling hook at the top of the wall that we make yeah, sure you just fly over yep. and don't just hit the lip of the wall. <laughs> and just go down. You yeah. actually you just, you just like, hit the lip You just never fall. actually get up on it. I'm like, that's going to be interesting. We need to make sure that we get <laughs> yeah, some yeah. momentum. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sure, like, that's the thing with like internal testing. We get 
to like have all these pic like these videos of like terrible things happening before you guys get to see yeah. them. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have a lot of really funny bug videos from, <laughs> from past games that I've worked on. Um, but yeah, so uh, I think we're gonna go into like our next class a little bit then. Which are what's the next slide? I can't see it. Next I think slide. that did we ever did we do Guardian? Weapon we did Master? not do yeah, Guardian. Let's do that we do next, Guardian. Yeah. All right. So we'll save. We'll save the other one. There you go, Guardian. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we've got uh, Guardian is kind of your more traditional sword and board kind of guy. Um, he's really focused on armor mitigation. Um, and then we have the Weapon Master, and the Weapon Master is more focused on a, a big health pool and keeping that health pool full. Um, and they're kind of more like uh, get in front, uh, disrupt the back lines, um, and kind of move people out of the way so that other people can get through. Um, so to that end, uh, the Guardian has the ability to do an AoE pull. You may have seen this in our Alpha Zero. Um, basically, they can throw out a bunch of spears, bring everybody to them, uh, and kind of force them to engage the, the Guardian. Um, then they also have a kind of a mobile shield that they can deploy that's kind of attached to the character. The character can move it around. It'll block any projectiles coming their way, prevent them from getting to the back lines, and then it will also absorb that damage and then eventually explode uh, doing AoE damage based on how much damage is absorbed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can stand in front of my friend and block yep. stuff. Yep, and I can heal. It. Yeah. It's cool. Awesome. Um, and then for the Weapon Master, right, we've got, again, the idea behind the Weapon Master is that they're super aggressive. Um, they're trying to get in disrupt things, make people run away. Um, and one of those abilities is the ability to leap. So a leap, these are these are not official names, right? <laughs> We're not just gonna call it leap, but um, we'll, we'll do a, a canonical pass on names later. But um, so they can basically do a gigantic leap forward. Uh, they'll do a superhero ground pound or maybe uh, smash the weapon down and then kind of blow everybody up from where they land. So again, this is really focused on getting them into the fight quickly um, and disrupting disrupting the, the opponent's lines. Um, then a uh, oldie, but a good one. Oldie, but good. Uh, spin to win, spin whirlwind. whirlwind. So, spin to win. so they can just stick out their weapon and just start spinning around I and, see, and like, the Darude doing a lot of chat. AOE damage. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and I know there's been some questions in chat regarding like showing some of this combat. Um, stay tuned on our social channels. We may be showing a little bit of mm -hmm. some animations and gifs and some oh, yeah. uh, of these classes and their and their abilities <coughs> as we move forward in the future. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have our support classes. Uh, we've got the High Priest, which is focused on sort of health and keeping people alive and maintaining sort of the the uh, stability of their team. Uh, and then we have the engineer who's more focused on either bringing things down or keeping things up. So they're, they're focused on inanimate objects like siege weapons, walls, gates, uh, making sure that stuff either stays healthy or get kids blown up. Right, um, and they each have their own uh, specific uh, you know, energy pools that they kind of manage and support, right? Mm -hmm. The high priest is focusing on health and stamina and replenishing those for the players. Uh, where the engineer focuses on armor and mana uh, and being able to augment those for players. Can you yep. talk a little bit more about like how that process is going to work, like how healing and how uh, like repairing is going to work? Because I know a lot of people have asked like how Absolutely. like the actual interaction yeah. between the players yeah. going to be. Uh, so one of the things that we we'll show it soon. We're doing yeah. right where we're we're still kind of in the experimentation phase and trying to figure out what exactly works well and what doesn't. Um, but right now we're really happy with what uh, we're doing with the scepter. Uh, so. Each class gets two weapons. Uh, I don't think we mentioned this before, but the High Priest, one of their weapons is the Scepter. Um, but what we're doing with the Scepter is we're going to make it so that any allies that the Scepter hits, it heals, and then any enemies that it hits, it damages. Yes. And we're like also... The, the boot, the booty, like... <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you know what? When, when you're in sports, like, like, I always see in football, like American football people slapping each other's boots. <coughs> like, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's exactly show. what we're doing. <laughs> this is a family show. Oh, I watched the past last year. Don't tell me that. That's all, Jeff. <laughs> um, it's never me. Um, so again, one of the one of the nice things about um, uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm trying not to use my hands. Um, I'm putting them under the table. The table. Um, so uh, one of the nice things about the scepter, right, is that it already has a homing component to it, and so that makes it a little bit easier. Instead of just shooting out something and hoping you hit, um, you can really focus on you right. know kind of guiding guiding your heels yeah, where they need to be. The way it works is you know on your reticle when you have a target, whether it be friend or foe, they kind of home into that yep. target after launch. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And then other things are going to be you know AOE based kind of heels, pools that you can lay down. Uh, these are abilities where you can kind of indicate to your allies, hey, come near, I'm yeah. going to support you and give yep. you some buffs. And stuff. Come here. Yeah. Um, the one thing that he, every healer is like, can you all just get close <laughs> just stand, to me? Stop moving. Because I'm trying yes. to heal you. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we're also going to bring back an oldie but a goodie. Uh, we're going to give uh, our clerics divine form. So divine form, if you guys played our Alpha Zero, was one of the ultimates that the cleric had in that version. Uh, we're going to keep it really similar. So it basically gives uh, the cleric a, uh, or sorry, high priest, um, a uh, <laughs> increased damage mitigation. Um, it will heal allies who are around and damage enemies who are around them. So um, it's kind of a super powerful buff that they get to use every once in a while. Um, and then finally, the engineer. The engineer is, is uh, I should caveat this, the engineer is very specifically a um, pre-fall class. Um, you're probably not going to see an engineer proper um, in Ashes of Creation, the MMO. Um, mm -hmm. Remember that this is, this is, a lot of progress that these civilizations have made during this period of time. And then after the fall happens and everybody goes off to Sanctus, magic disappears. So mm. they have to kind of refigure out how to do a lot yeah, of these so things. Actually, someone was asking if there's going to be Resurrect as an option. For resurrect players. might be an option. We still have to kind of figure <coughs> out. Um, this is a balancing. Yeah. So, I mean, the idea behind the, the life pool and player uh, uh, lives in, in castle sieges that are different than what you're seeing currently in Apocalypse with the Battle Royale mode is that you have an infinite number of lives. What's different is upon death, you join a, uh, a, 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 a period of time that the respawn timer, everybody shares. And it, let's say that respawn timer is 20 seconds and, and you die when that it's reached 10 seconds. You have 10 seconds remaining until you respawn with a pool of your allies. Yeah, it's uh, like a dead pool. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're all um, dead together. It's fine, <coughs> friends. So, uh, for the engineer, a couple of the abilities that they have, they have uh, one of their one of their primary weapons is the crossbow, um, and they have an earthquake bolt. So they can fire out a little contraption uh, that unfolds and starts pounding the ground. And every time it pounds, <laughs> it'll knock all the enemies up that are around it. Um, again, kind of keeping people out of position, um, kind of affecting the battlefield and supporting their allies in a way that doesn't necessarily deal direct damage. Um, and then they also have the Gizmo of Ingress, um, which is a little pod that they can place down. And anybody who is an ally who steps on that pod uh, gets a catfall use, uh, one-time use. So they mm -hmm. can it kind of help their, their friends kind of get over the walls, um, get into places they otherwise shouldn't be. Yes. Uh -huh. um, and there's some questions regarding like uh, damaging armor mm -hmm. and how that's going to work uh, and the difference between the MMO and also APOC. Right. So, so go ahead. No, no. Okay. <laughs> so I mean, just like I've been talking what, for a while. What, what you're seeing currently I've been slamming in, the table. <laughs> what you're seeing currently in the battle royale feature of Apocalypse is you find armor and that gives you an armor pool, um, and then you uh, can regenerate your armor. What we're going to be experiencing in the castle siege form is each class will have a, a set amount of armor that they join the match with that's already full, and <coughs> a set amount of health that's already full. Upon losing uh, um, uh, armor. You can either have your armor replenished by an engineer, or there, <coughs> there may be. <coughs> excuse me, sorry, Jeff. <laughs> you might have to take over. <laughs> uh, there may be uh, ability for you to find items that are in, in the world, or there could be um, objectives that replenish armor for the entire team, such as one of the buffs for taking a control point. Right. Oh yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah um, I think he was asking more like, how does that translate to the MMO? Yeah. Uh, in terms yeah, of yeah. Um, it. which, it's going to be different. Um, yes. Armor is not going to function as a pool in um, in the MMO. Correct. There will be like straight mitigation uh, the, and one health pool. Um, so so you're not going to see an armor bar like you would in, in this version in the Uriah right. mode. And then I think the next question was, for the classes in siege mode, will this have stamina on melee weapon swings and magic to recharge ranged weapons? People are wondering about that. Yeah, so we're going to probably change a little bit of that. You're going to see abilities <coughs> use stamina and mana more often than you do in, in the, the straight BR mode. Um, Generally, though, it's going to work fairly similar. We'll probably give mana a, a regen rate, a passive regen rate, yes. um, and we'll probably have some class interact with that at some point. Um, but uh, you're not going to find like mana drops on the field uh, like you do in the BR. So that's going to be handled a little bit differently, pretty close, but it'll have to be handled a little bit differently. And there's a lot of spam in chat asking about dual wielding class. Uh, there is, unfortunately, no <laughs> dual wielding class yet. Not yet. Uh, not yet. Yeah. There you go. So that answers some of that. Um, I guess that is our classes. Yeah, that no, I, that so was a far. lot of talking. So um, we hope that you guys like those and you know give us feedback on some of those ideas that we've thrown out and um, you know if you have 
some ideas of your own, you can send them our way. But obviously, as we get closer to sh revealing some of those, we're going to be showing you guys uh, the animations, how some of those skills work. Um, in fact, we're working on some videos that will be specific to each class, so we'll have class videos for the Siege classes. So there's a lot of cool stuff that's going to be coming out, and hopefully you guys enjoy that content. Um, I think the last thing that we want to talk about in regards to classes is maybe like small scale raid composition formats and like how what classes are going to be really good together or like what kind of things that you guys would recommend for people um, as we move forward. <clears throat> yeah, the uh, the idea behind we're talking about raid composition for the Castle Siege. Yeah, and yeah, Castle Siege. Yeah. yeah. So the raid composition for Cap Castle Siege and Apocalypse. When you're in the class selection phase, this would be at the beginning of the match. You're going to be able to see your team's selection numbers that are associated with. How many people have chosen the Guardian? How many people have chosen Engineer? Mm -hmm. The idea behind our balance is that these are intended to work together uh, as a fairly balanced composition. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to be as balanced as possible the number of these of these uh, classes that you select. Uh, and being able to see at the beginning of the match, you know, how many people have selected what is going to give you the 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 uh, information to select other mm -hmm. ones. Yeah. Um, and people are wondering if you're going to be able to change classes during siege mode. So, like, will you, will you go in and you're like you're stuck in that class during that mode, or will you be able to like swap during the middle of the, <coughs> the battle? Uh, we're still discussing that. We kind of keep going back and forth on it. Um, there's there's benefits and pros and cons to both sides. Um, I think right now we're leaning towards uh, not being able to switch. We don't really want class switching to be a meta that ends up becoming part of the game. Um, but we're still really considering it. It's not. It's not. We don't have. We have strong feelings both ways, uh, but we really we still haven't come to a final decision on it. This is a cool question too. Um, will Apocalypse still be running once the MMO is launched? Most likely. Yeah. yeah. I think like mm -hmm. our plan is to kind of have two simultaneous products. Yeah. So, so as if you long as just people like still that, love it, yeah. If, right. If you're right. I mean, it, the right. idea again, the idea behind Apocalypse is that it gives us an avenue to test certain types of features so that can, are. We can preview stuff that's going to go in the exactly. MMO, yeah. So for example, in Horde mode, as we have bosses with specific types of mechanics. We can see how those bosses interact with the horde mode before we intend to place yep. that boss in uh, the yep. MMO. It actually is a really great way to test world yeah. uh, world bosses because yes. uh, we can really throw a ton of people at a given monster and see what happens without necessarily having to reveal all that stuff yes. in in the MMO proper. So there's and some cool stuff. Same is true that. for skills and abilities mm -hmm. that we may want to test the functionality of. Yep. Right. Uh, being able to scale up the number of combatants within an area, uh, we can start to push those bounds easier in a confined matchmaking process than we can in a It's like a controlled game. experiment, yes. really, is what it is. <laughs> hmm. What does that mean that we are <laughs> as we're playing? Um, rats. So I think another question that people had, are we going to increase the pool of classes? Like, are these the final six <clears throat> classes, or will there be more classes <clears throat> that you're thinking about adding? We, we had a little bit of an idea that we're going to explore with regards to each of the classes having a range of skills and abilities that players can customize that, that skill kit based on their progression within a season, let's say. Uh, and that progression can be gained from any of the modes, and it would grant you the ability to kind of customize that skill kit uh, for the MMO, excuse me, for the Siege uh, mode or the Horde mode. Uh, but that's something that might come at a later date. Yeah. Um, and as far as classes go, it's possible. Um, I'm not quite sure. Um, you know what what our timeline will be six months from now or, or where we're at so <coughs> right now six classes possibly in the future there'll be more mm -hmm. okay and certainly for other modes there might be more too mm -hmm. yeah and i think that um you know that kind of wraps up a lot of the stuff that's regarding siege and um you know thank you guys for for tuning in here I hope you liked today's show, and if you did, please subscribe, or stay and watch more videos.